is Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast, helping foodies discover new restaurants and new friends. Here's your host, the founder of Mystery Meat, Seth Ressler. Hello, and welcome to Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Seth Ressler. Excited today because today we are going to find the best burger in Denver. We're talking to Ben Haley. He is the blogger behind the Burger Baron blog. Uh, so we're going to talk to him a little bit about his blog, and then we're also going to talk to him about the city of Denver, everything a foodie needs to know about Denver. We'll get his restaurant recommendation where you can find the best burger in Denver. And finally, we will play Out of the Frying Pan, a little game where we get some additional restaurant recommendations, if you will. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk about Mystery Meat, let everybody know exactly what Mystery Meat is. Uh, it's a social dining group that we started in Boston. It's a bunch of foodies who get together to have a meal. The only catch is they don't actually know where they're going until 24 hours in advance. So you buy your tickets, you don't know where you're going, you get some clues, maybe you can figure it out if you're good. But otherwise you just show up and there's 20 other foodies there, and you all get together, and you talk about food, which is great, because uh, if you like talking about food and you're really into this stuff, this is the best company you could possibly have. And if you want a mystery meat dinner in your town, what you need to do is go to mysterymeatmeet.org, click the big orange button that says Get an Invitation, and uh, you know when we see a lot of interest in a particular city, we will start the mystery meat dinners there. Ben Haley of the Burger Baron, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. So uh, tell us a little bit about the blog. Well, um, it started about a little over a year ago. My wife and I and a few other couples decided we were going to try a new burger place here in South Denver. So we're all hanging out at this uh, at this burger restaurant and thought, man, what if we started a blog and started rating burgers in Denver and just made it kind of our goal this summer to find, you know, maybe the top five burgers in Denver. So we got all excited, as groups of people will do, and uh, turns out everyone sort of petered out except me because I'm obsessed with burgers. And so I thought, man, I'm going to keep this thing going. So I've been doing it about a year and a half, trying to review a burger a week. How many burgers are there in Denver? Are you running low at any point or are you finding more than enough to write about? Well, I'll tell you what, we're in the West, so we got a lot of cows, which is good. Uh, we get a lot of beef, so... Luckily, there are so many burger restaurants that I have yet to try. So there's important work left to be done. And you know what? It's my cross to bear. Someone's got to get out there and eat these burgers. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. We're glad you're here to help. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, is the blog just about burger restaurants or is it also about cooking burgers? Yeah. I, you know, I do like to throw a little of that in there. Um, as far as, you know, if you're going to do something at home, what are some great tactics you can use? Where can you get good ingredients in Denver? You know, how do you cook them? And so I'm constantly doing experimenting at the house. So give me a couple tips if I'm cooking a burger. I mean, what are the things that you found that really work well? First and foremost, you got to have good ingredients. If you're able to get some buns from a bakery, that's always a great step. I love getting beef from a meat market rather than just your everyday chuck from a uh, from a grocery store, although that'll work. You know, so good ingredients. Make sure you don't handle the meat a lot. You want to really loosely pack the uh, patties. Salt and pepper after you make the patties. Um, if you salt and you mix the spices into the, the meat, sometimes it starts messing with your texture a little bit. Probably the biggest thing that I found at home um, that has revolutionized how I do burgers at the house. I will preface this by saying I do like a grilled burger, so I will fire up the grill outside. But I've been doing my burgers lately in a cast iron skillet, which my mom bought me for Christmas. That is just the best approximation that you're going to get at your house to a flat top griddle that you'll find in, you know, in a good burger restaurant. So doing them on the cast iron, you get a great crust on the burger, that salty brown crust, and you can caramelize your onions right in there. It makes for great patties. So cast iron skillet. If you don't have one, you should buy one for burgers. So I noticed a word as I was going through your blog that uh, was interesting to me. It was the word ratios. What exactly are you looking for when you talk about ratios when it comes to a burger? Well, I think ratio is probably one of the most fundamental things that I think about when I'm having a burger. There's nothing worse than a burger 
that has so much bun on it that you feel like you're having to wade through this bread to get to the heart of the burger, which is your meat, your cheese. Same thing can happen with produce or toppings. You know, there's been some burgers that I've had that are just so unbalanced when it comes to toppings. Ideally for me, I want the meat and the cheese and the bun to all be speaking from a flavor perspective. I want to taste that bread, but not have it be so much that I'm having to peel off, you know, half of the top bun. Another terrible, terrible mistake that uh, you hate to encounter when you're having a burger is just a piddly thin slice of cheese on a big patty, and you're fighting your way through this burger going, man, if there was another slice of cheese on here, melt it down, this would just take it up a notch. So ratios are so important, I think, to a, a good balanced burger. Uh, let me ask you about going out and buying burgers when you go to like a burger joint. Uh, and actually, I want to get you to weigh in. I'm not going to ask you about you know the, the typical fast food joints. But you are starting to see these chains that kind of have a reputation for being a, a slight notch ahead, like an In-N-Out burger or a Five Guys. What's your opinion of places like those? I think if these places do it right, you know, Five Guys, they've they've cropped up in Denver here. There's another one that uh, started in Denver called Smash Burger. There are more of these, you know, kind of mid-fast casual, I would call it. You know, sort of the Chipotle of burritos. You've got these burger places now that are a notch above fast food. So they can be good. I mean, they definitely can satisfy a craving if you do it right. Now, I've also seen some high-end restaurants come to the table with their own burger. You know, I like, I remember in Boston, actually one of the best burgers I've ever had was at a place called um, Craigie on Main, $20 burger, and there's bone marrow in there, and there's all sorts of high-end ingredients. Where do you weigh in on those high-end burgers? See, I love it. I mean, I, I would put that at the other spectrum. You know, you've got sort of the best of the casual burgers would be like an In-N-Out, and then you've got these higher end places where, you know, you may be, we've got a restaurant here in Denver um, called Elway's. There's, I think, two locations now started by John Elway. And he's got a burger on his menu that, you know, I think a la carte, it's 16 bucks or something. So, you know, if you're going to have a, some fries and a couple beers, you're looking at 25 bucks for a burger, which some people laugh at and go, you got to be kidding me. It's a cheeseburger. But when you're talking about, you know, creating a patty with the trimmings from their steaks, which, of course, is, you know, the best quality meat you're going to find, buns baked in-house, high-quality cheeses, this whole trend of real culinary experience when it comes to the cheeseburger is sort of like the best of both worlds for me because I'm a foodie in general, and you can have a burger, which is just this American classic, but it's really done with a lot of thought behind it. Man, I, I love it. Um, all right, we're going to get back into burgers in just a moment, but I want to back up and talk about the city of Denver for a little while. What do foodies need to know about Denver? I mean, what is Denver known for from a culinary perspective? You know, what's the city been like for you? Well, it's been real good. Um, in Littleton, which is a suburb south of Denver, they have an old main street, you know, sort of a historic district. They have a very high-end restaurant that is consistently rated as one of the best in Denver called Opus. So there's that restaurant there. There's a little uh, mom-and-pop cafe called Cafe Terracotta that serves some great um, breakfasts with a Mexican flair. So we have some of these local spots south of Denver, but primarily speaking, some of the best hot spots are places like the Highlands. So this is just north of downtown, great city views, and a lot of more kind of one-off type privately owned restaurants. A little Italian spot called Stella Trattoria is phenomenal, real basic, very tasty Italian food. Um, Lulu is a great Mexican joint up in the Highlands. Highland Tappen Burger is um, one of the competitors in um, the Denver Burger Battle. They make some great food. And then, of course, the city itself, you know, downtown Denver, known as Lodo, you've got, you know, high-class um, steak and sushi places. So we have a great variety in Denver as far as restaurants go. Probably what we're the most famous for as a city 
is having started Chipotle. The first Chipotle is uh, here in Denver, a great little spot. I mean, there's only a seating for maybe 15 people in the whole place. Smash Burgers, another place. Noodles and Company started up in Boulder. So actually, some of these you know mid-grade, uh, fast, casual places with high-quality ingredients, a lot of that has come out of the Denver-Boulder area. So that's definitely something that we're proud of and what we're known for. Oh, very cool. And what are some of the new trends that you're seeing now in Denver? One of the things I'm really excited about as far as a new trend is food trucks. So being in the middle of the USA, trends always get to us later. You know, they always start either on the East Coast or the West Coast, and then they sort of trickle their way inland until they finally get to Denver. So food trucks, of course, have been going crazy out on the coasts forever now, Seattle and San Diego and all this, but... They're finally making their way to Denver. And so, whereas a couple years ago, you know, there was a spot downtown where once a week there was maybe six food trucks, which was the biggest thing going. This last year, the city of Denver had about 150 applications wow. for, uh, for food truck permits. And so, the food truck thing is finally starting to catch on, and um, that's been really exciting because you know, it makes us feel cool. <laughs> you know, as I start to talk to people all over the country, that's actually the trend that I think I'm hearing the most about is the popping up of food trucks. So Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you can finally join the ranks there in Denver. Oh, I'm definitely excited about it, that's for sure. All right, you've mentioned it a couple times. Let's, uh, let's talk about it, the Denver Burger Battle, which just happened there, right? It happens in August? Just happened. So tell me what that's all about. Well, so Denver Burger Battle, this was the third year. This year, the Denver Burger Battle was on the field at Sports Authority Field where the Broncos play. And to get in, it's it's 75 bucks. So it's a little bit steep as far as your entry fee, but well worth it. But essentially what it is, is 12 or 14 restaurants, they all come down, they bring their kitchen staff, they've got portable grills and flat tops. And they basically bring their absolute best to the table. So the 75 bucks gets you in, and then it's all-you-can-eat burgers. They've got a couple uh, microbreweries from Colorado serving beer. So what the restaurant does is they make up a regular burger from their menu, and then they cut it into fourths. And then you grab a fourth, you taste it, and then you just walk around tasting and eating burgers. So... For a guy like me, for the Burger Baron, this is like the Super Bowl. I, I'm in heaven. And what's great about it is these restaurants are just bringing their best. So each restaurant has to pick one burger from their menu with which to compete. And then you've got a judge's choice, and then you've got a people's choice. And so you get the top three in each category. So needless to say, you don't feel great afterwards because I probably <laughs> had four to five whole burgers. Right. But uh, it was awesome. Nice. What was the weirdest burger that you saw at the Burger Battle? One place had a burger made of yak, and another restaurant called, um, I think it was Tag, had an ostrich burger. Those were definitely the most bizarre from a, uh, a pure burger standpoint. So it was actually great to get to try some new meat that I'd never tried. The yak was a bit oversalted. The ostrich burger actually was very tasty. So it didn't taste like chicken? Actually, it tastes more like beef, believe it or not. Good to know. All right, let's talk about uh, your restaurant recommendation. I know that this was the number three judge's choice at the Denver Burger Battle, and it was the number two people's choice, but this is your number one choice for uh, the best burger in Denver. Tell me about it. Well, yeah, I think Park Burger is, is your best overall burger in Denver, for sure. One of the things I love about this restaurant is they really think through everything it is that, that they put into a burger. And so they've got really good quality ingredients, a very cool vibe at the restaurant. So just the atmosphere itself is awesome. From a burger perspective, they do their burgers on a flat top, which I love. Their meat is phenomenal. It's from a ranch, uh, I believe in California, called Harris Ranch. And there's only a few places in Denver I've found that, cook with Harris Ranch beef, but it comes fresh, never frozen. Their buns are from a local bakery, a potato bun from a local bakery. So they just really do a good job putting these things together. And they've thought through the basics of a burger, which means that 
anything extra that they're doing is on a solid foundation. And that's, that is a key component. I think that a lot of burger places miss is they focus so much on, you know, some sort of exotic toppings or flavor combinations, but they aren't really thinking through the fundamentals of a burger. Park burger really does great on both accounts. Who's the chef behind Park Burger? Well, so the chef, I'll probably get this name wrong, is Jean-Philippe... Fallou, I'm going to guess. It's French, yeah, right? Fal- 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 I'm, yeah, Fallou, French, is my, is my guess. <laughs> I have yet to meet him. I'm, I'm really excited to actually meet him. But um, So he got his start at, at the French Culinary Institute in New York City and uh, really was in the fine dining world. So some of the top restaurants in New York City... San Francisco and Denver. Um, he owns another couple restaurants in Denver. Osteria Marco is one, which I haven't eaten at yet. He's got a second Park Burger location, and then a location that's similar to the Park Burgers called Park and Company. They share some of the same menu, but they have a couple other items that are a bit different. So the guy has some great pedigree from a culinary standpoint. This guy obviously knows what he's doing, and it definitely shows. All right, so as I sit down and look at the menu, uh, what's your favorite burger on the menu? My go-to burger at Park Burger is American cheese caramelized onions on a third-pound patty. It comes with their burger sauce, which is, you know, sort of a variation on, you know, on like a Thousand Island orange burger sauce, classic without being boring. So that is my go-to Park Burger. Cooked medium rare always. It's the way you got to do it. Sounds good. Any others that uh, we should also be looking at if we want to vary it up a little bit? Well, I have to mention this burger because if I don't, I'll I'll catch some flack for my wife. She always orders the Royale, which is uh, caramelized, I mean, blue cheese and bacon. I take a bite of this burger if she orders it. It's a great burger. They do a really good job with their blue cheese melt, which is not a lot. You know, you don't see that a lot. Blue cheese is a tough cheese to melt, but they do a good job without overcooking the patty. Bacon, I mean, there's two types of people in the world. Either you like bacon or you're wrong. (laughs) So that's another great burger. All right, and of course, the other uh, big thing that you got to judge a burger joint by is the fries. So how are they at Park Burger? Park Burger does a great job with their fries. Usually, if I'm with a group of people, we'll get a couple baskets of all three. They've got your standard French fries. They've got sweet potato fries and then Parmesan and truffle fries. Truffle's another one of those things where it's like, man, if you're going to throw truffle in it, bring it on. I mean, if you like truffle, you're in heaven. They're skinny fries, not shoestring, bacon and shake type fries, but not quite as thick as, say, you know, like a Wendy's fry, not steak fries. These fries are, you know, maybe a little thinner than sort of a McDonald's size fry. But they come out in little, uh, you know, wire baskets with the wax paper in there and uh, a lot of fun to just get, you know, one of each kind and share with friends. Sounds good. What are we drinking? So when they first started, it was just a small little place. And just recently, they closed down for a bit and they expanded. They bought the uh, adjacent space and they blew out the back wall and put in a lot more seating. One of the other things that they, they were able to put in was a full bar. So whereas they used to just be selling, um, you know, bottled beer, now they've got a full bar and they've got a ton of local Colorado beers, Um, local meaning by state. We've got a lot of breweries, you know, maybe an hour, hour and a half north of where we are in Denver, but we get a lot of Colorado beers at Park Burgers. Sounds good. You got a favorite that you can recommend? I'm going to actually recommend two beers that sort of surprising for me to recommend. I usually don't drink stouts or wheat beers, but Park Burger has two local Colorado beers from two different breweries. One of them is the Mothership Wit from New Belgium. Of course, everyone knows New Belgium because of Fat Tire, which has sort of made its way across the country. The Mothership Wit is great. They brew it with some coriander and a little bit of an orange peel flavor in there. Um, It's an organic wheat beer that's really good. The second one from a different local uh, Colorado brewery, from the Left Hand Brewery, the Milk Stout from the Left Hand Brewery. And uh, that's another great beer. And we should point out, for Denver's best burger, 
this is not an expensive burger. No, it's definitely not. I mean, you can be in and out of there. You know, I mean, a burger is only going to run you about eight bucks. Um, you get some fries to share and a beer to, and, you know, you're looking at a, a fairly cheap experience that's going to be light years beyond, you know, what you're going to find at like a Five Guys or, or something like that. All right, that's a great recommendation. Ben, you ready to play a little game? All right, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, this game is called Out of the Frying Pan. Here's how it works. I'm going to ask you to give me some recommendations off the top of your head. No rehearsal, no practice. You just got to tell me the first thing that pops into your mind, okay? You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. We have talked a lot about burgers. Let's talk about pizza. Where's the best place to get pizza in Denver? Oh, boy, good question. Well, all right, off the top of my head, there's a place downtown Denver called Two-Fisted Mario's, which is a great name. And uh, Two Fist of Mario's is a great spot to just get a slice of New York-style pizza. Two Fist of Mario's is my answer there. All right. Uh, you know, if we want to try some cheeses, some different cheeses, besides just the American cheese to put on our burger, where is the best place in Denver to buy cheese? Best place to buy cheese. It's a place called Tony's Meat Market. There's several of these places. It's a small family-owned grocery store. I want to say there's maybe three or four of these in Denver. And they have a great selection of cheeses, the type of stuff where you're looking through the cheeses, you don't even know what you're reading, but you want to buy it because it looks so good. You know, if I come to Denver, I'm going to want to dine outdoors. Where's the best place to do some outdoor dining? Dining outdoors in Denver, there's a spot in South Denver, Cafe Terracotta. I I mentioned this earlier. Cafe Terracotta is a very small, family-owned place, about a 100-year-old house. And they've got a beautiful garden out front uh, with a selection of tables, heat lamps in the winters, just a really, really quiet street where you can get a great steak, um, some braised short ribs, phenomenal date spot. All right, here's a curveball for the burger guy. Where's the best vegetarian spot? I am surprised that I know the answer to this, but there is a restaurant called Watercourse Foods in Denver, somewhere on the outskirts of downtown. Um, Watercourse Foods is very good vegetarian food. We've got a lot of vegetarians and vegans in Denver, um, very healthy state. So if you go to Watercourse Foods, I've been there several times, and as a meat eater, I'm nervous every time I go, and I have been very impressed every time, left very satisfied. All right, good. Last question. Where in Denver... Would you want to have your last meal before death? Oh, boy. Last meal before death. You know, I'm going to have to say my last meal before death would be Elway's Steakhouse. To date, the best filet mignon that I've ever had. I think a la carte, it's probably 45 bucks or something. So it's not a place I get to very much on, on my small burger baron salary. But Elway's really, really does a great steak. And uh, phenomenal sides. I'd probably get the steak, and then I'd probably order their burger as well, just to top it off. All right, very good. Thank you for the great recommendation. That wasn't so hard, was it? No, that was great. I'm I'm excited to go out to uh, eat now. All right. Well, if you're going out, Park Burger is at 1890 South Pearl Street in Denver. Uh, people can look it up at parkburger.com. Uh, they can also find the the uh, Denver Burger Battle at denverburgerbattle.com. What about you, Ben Haley of the Burger Baron? Where can people find you online? Well, I am at www.theburgerbaron.com. And the is very important. If you don't get that, you end up at some uh, some burger place up in Canada, I think. But theburgerbaron.com is the place to find me. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks so much. This is great. This has been Mystery Meat's Fine Dining Podcast. Uh, I am Seth Ressler. If you want a Mystery Meat dinner in your city, here's what you got to do. You got to go to mysterymeat.org, click the big orange button that says get an invitation and sign up. And when we start seeing a lot of interest in your city for a Mystery Meat dinner, we're going to get a bunch of foodie together. We're going to have a great meal. We just won't be able to tell you where it is. Also, If you enjoy this podcast, do us a favor. Go over to iTunes and uh, give it a nice rating. And if you're a food blogger, you want to come on and you want to recommend a a restaurant for everybody out there, go to mysterymeat.org and just uh, contact us, and we'd be glad to have you as a guest. Ben of the Burger Baron, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, thank you to everybody for listening. 
this has been Mystery Meets Fine Dining Podcast. You can find links to the websites mentioned in this episode at mysterymeetsmeet.org slash podcast. Thank you for listening.